Hi, and welcome back to another podcast with Mr. Hagen. On this podcast, we are going to put the demand curve and the supply curve together onto the same graph so that we have a downward sloping demand curve right here and an upward sloping supply curve right here. On the vertical axis, as always, we have the price of the good, and on the horizontal axis, we have the quantity of the good. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out where prices come from on this video. So first of all, let's let's just kind of pick a price at random and, and see what would happen. So let's say that we have a price of a good that is uh, down here, we're going to say at, at some price P1. So if the price is down here, then the first thing we do is we draw a horizontal price line coming across. So here comes my price line coming across to where I hit the demand curve. And then I come down, and I mark that as my quantity demanded. So that's going to be some number, uh, whatever that number might be. Let's see if I can just set that up. Okay, so let's say that, that that's my quantity demanded right there, which is some number, whatever that number happens to be. And if we take that price across to where we hit the supply curve and come down, that's going to be the quantity supplied, which is also going to be some number. The quantity of the good that producers are willing to bring to market is right here at this price. And the quantity demanded, the amount that the consumer wants at this price, is going to be uh, some number right here. And what we can clearly see is that at a price of P1, whatever that price level happens to be, the quantity demanded is going to be greater than the quantity supplied as measured on the horizontal axis. So in other words, we would say that the when the price of the good is at P1, the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied. Now, whenever that's true, the quantity demands greater than the quantity demanded. Uh, I'm sorry, the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied. Whenever that's true, then we say that there is a shortage in the market. Now, what's going to happen if there's a shortage in the market? Well, if there's a shortage in the market, then the consumers, as measured by the quantity demanded, are going to begin to bid up the price. See, the consumers are going to want a lot of the good, and the suppliers aren't going to be willing to bring much to market. So, when, so what's going to happen is the consumers, to try to get the good, because there's a lot of consumers that want the good, and only a couple of goods brought to market. So what's going to happen is these consumers here are going to begin to bid up the price to try to get the good. Now, let's see what happens as they bid up the price. So the price would get bid up to... Um, I don't know, some number, say, P2. So the price gets up to P2 as the consumers, who want a lot of the good, compete to buy the small amount of the good that the producers brought to market. As those consumers begin to bid up the price, as the price begins to rise, the size of the shortage will get smaller because the new quantity demanded will now be less at the higher price but the quantity supplied at the higher price will be greater. Now, we still have a shortage, right? So as the price went up, the quantity demanded is going to fall from, from here to here. The quantity supplied is going to rise from here to here. But still, the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied. So there is still a shortage, a smaller shortage, but still a shortage. If there's a shortage... That means consumers want more of the good than the producer brought to market. So to get that good, then the consumers will continue to bid up the price to try to get the suppliers to sell them more. That will continue until we get to this point right here. That point is where the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied. And that point where the uh, quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied is a very important point. That point is called equilibrium. That is called equilibrium, where the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied. So that's going to happen right here. The amount that the consumer wants 
is going to be exactly equal to, at, at this price, we'll call it P3, at this new price, the quantity demanded will be exactly equal to the quantity supplied because that's where the two curves intersect. On the other hand, let's take a look at what will happen if the price happens to be, for some reason, up pi. So let's say the price is, starts up here at some number P1. If the price is here, then we come across with our horizontal price line till we hit the supply curve and come down. That's going to be the quantity supplied. Follow that price line until we come across, hit the demand curve and come down. And that's going to be the quantity demanded. And what we can clearly see is that at this price of P1, the quantity supplied will be much greater than the quantity demanded. So let's write that. The, when the price is at P1, the quantity supplied will be greater than the quantity demanded. And that's called a surplus. There's a surplus of goods in the market. So suppliers are bringing all these extra units to market that the demander, the consumer, does not want. So what are they going to do to get rid of those extra units? They're going to have to lower their price. So when they lower their price, let's say they lower their price to, say, P2, bring that across, horizontal line, hit the supply curve and come down. That's going to be the new quantity supplied. Follow that P2 over to where it hits the demand curve and come down. And that will be the new quantity demanded. Now notice, again, as the price begins to fall, as suppliers um, have to uh, lower their price to get rid of all these extra units they have, all these extra goods that nobody wants, that people don't want to buy, because the price was too high, as they lower the price to get rid of them, the quantity supplied will decrease. Consumers will buy less of the good. As that price goes down, move along the demand curve, consumers will want to buy more of the good and the quantity demanded will go up. There will still be a surplus. Quantity supplied will still be greater than the quantity demanded. There will still be a surplus, but the surplus will be smaller than it was before. As long as there's a surplus, however, the price will continue to get bid down. So the price will continue to get bid down to, say, some price P3. At P3, we come across, that is again at equilibrium, where the quantity demanded is exactly equal to the quantity supplied. So at P3, the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied, and that again is equilibrium. So that's kind of that, this magic equilibrium point where the quantity supplied, not really magic, of course, but where the quantity demanded is exactly equal to the quantity supplied. So let's say what that, what that really means. So it's really kind of remarkable in a way because what will happen is if the price starts high up here, then there will be a surplus, as we showed earlier, and the price will get bid down. If the price starts down here low, then there will be a shortage and the price will get bid up. And that process will continue always until we get to this P1 where the quantity demanded will exactly equal the quantity supplied. So we could say down here that at P1, the quantity demanded the amount that the consumer wants to buy will be exactly equal to the quantity supplied. So this, this Q1 here is both the quantity demanded and it's also the quantity supplied. That's the importance of this intersection point. So this was so important that Adam Smith had a special name for this. He called this, this whole process the invisible hand. He called that whole process the invisible hand. And the reason why that's so important is because think about what this means. When the price, the price is always going to be at P1. If it's above, it's going to get bid back to P, back down to P1. If the price is down here, it's going to get bid up to P1. So the price will always, by surpluses and shortages, be driven to P1. And at P1, 
the quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied, which means this. Here's the key. That means that the consumer wants to buy the exact amount of the good that the producer brought to market. Or say it the other way, the producer will bring to market the exact amount of the good that the consumer wants to buy. So what we would say is that creates order in the marketplace. Friedrich Hayek called this whole idea, see if I can fit it up here, he called it spontaneous order. He called it spontaneous order. That is to say, order is brought to the market without anybody being in control. It just happens. It just emerges, this order. And what does order mean? Order means that quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. That means that the producers will make the exact amount of the good that the consumer wants. That's the idea of equilibrium. Hope that helps a little bit. This has been Mr. Hagen on another Econ Podcast. And we will see you on the next Econ Podcast. See you then.